This episode of the Writer's Room Game Show is brought to you by the Story Clock Workbook from Plot Devices. The Story Clock Workbook is built for breaking open your story ideas and getting your hands dirty, mining your ideas and resources and inspiration for every last ounce of potential, organically break your story into an outline, thoroughly rip off your inspiration, figure out any exploitable resources you might have, determine your weaknesses so you can lean into them. Stories take work. Learn more about how the Story Clock Workbook can help you work smarter at plotdevices.co and get 20% off your first order with code GAMESHOW at checkout. I love the line, Harrison Ford has been murdered. I want to see the scene at the end where they show what actually happened in Harrison Ford. <laughs> What's going on here? What is oh my God, chickens. Not again. Not again. <laughs> the chickens get revenge on Harrison Ford from, from, from a past incident. Yeah, he comes out here a lot. He loves it out here. It's like a riding retreat or a, I don't know. What is Harrison These Ford damn do? chickens. An acting retreat. Oh, this hasn't gone off the rails. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Seth. And welcome to the Writer's Room Game Show. It's the podcast where every week we generate an original feature film idea from scratch in under 60 minutes, working from a set of random prompts given to us by a big Hollywood studio. At the beginning of every episode, the studio, which is really just an iPhone shortcut, assigns us, the contestants, a new project consisting of four components. The genre, the tone, the demographic, and the studio mandate, which is basically just a random thing that the studio is requiring. We then have one hour to develop a feature film idea that fits the assigned criteria, with surprise roadblocks along Along the way. And at the end of the episode, we'll focus group the idea with one of our talented filmmaker friends and ask them actual dumb focus group questions. Like, you know, would you see this movie or would you recommend this movie to a friend? If they answer positively, we win and roll around in money for eight hours. And if we, if they answer negatively, we quit screenwriting altogether and do it again next week. Seth, this is the first time we're recording in, in three or four weeks. It's, uh, yeah, you've just been relaxing on the beach doing absolutely nothing. Yes, definitely right? not hanging out with a newborn baby that was born. You're <laughs> newborn um, baby specifically <laughs> not just a random newborn baby but i'm very excited to get back into it um hopefully we're not too rusty with this whole podcast thing we've had a lot of fun episodes coming out in the wake of the newborn but uh this one today the wake, the wake of the newborn is actually the name of the film we're developing today <laughs> i don't know if that's a horror movie or if it's uh but i'm very excited about today's episode uh seth you want to tell the people who we got joining us today i'm so excited that i kind of want to drag it out as long as possible and actually never introduce him no today on the show this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to us no offense ryan Connolly, you were also the greatest thing to ever happen to us but today we have our friend he's the writer director of toy story 4 he is directing the new animated transformers film he's writing the tower of terror movie with scarlett johansson he's doing like eight other different things all at once he wrote an inside out i mean good god please welcome our friend josh cooley thank you Welcome, Josh. Uh, if I'm the greatest thing that's ever happened to you, that uh, this our wives don't listen to the great. show. I'm praying. <laughs> that's really especially since you just had a newborn. Like that should be the greatest thing that ever happened. No, to it's you, like but... it's Josh Cooley and then the newborn baby. <laughs> all right, that, I understand that. That's nice. Podcast Thank above all. Thank you for having me. Yes. What is this podcast? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, did we just say the intro again. <laughs> we're gonna no, we're no. gonna write a, a cynical body horror movie for nine to twelve year old boys and. <laughs> That is I the, love how you guys have taken the probably the most painful part of making a film and you've decided we're going to do it in an hour and then make it even harder for ourselves and then record it and release that to the world. We, you know, I'm if here, no one's going to pay us to do it, we're going to force them to experience it. <laughs> we joke about how we really, really should have called this the writer's room shit show because that's kind of the <laughs> stage that we're representing 100%. Like, and. It's like we've, writing we've, jackass is what you're doing. <laughs> we've <laughs> also <laughs> joked about the fact that we'll never actually win a pitch on one of our original ideas that we've worked years on. And one day we're going to win a pitch pitching one of these writer's room game show ideas that we developed in an hour. Uh, Absolutely. That's, that's how it works. That's the way it goes. With Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there oh, they are. Oh, that's my, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh, is that on your side? I think that's the studio. Let me pick it up. Hello? Is Josh's mom calling Ryan? Hey, studio. How's it going? Yeah, long time no talk. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we'll excite. Okay, email to Seth. All right. All right, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Josh, how was the studio? They uh, they emailed wow. Seth. They emailed Seth an assignment. They're just letting me know that they're emailing. They, they call called Ryan. you to email... <laughs> To let you know they're going to email. It's a, yes, they it have sounds a, like a studio. That yeah. sounds right. Yeah. They're very efficient. Yes. 
Well, the studio today has assigned us, they would like a murder mystery. Ooh. And the tone they have uh, specified they would like is tongue in cheek. Okay, I like that. They're looking to target specifically dads with this film. (laughs) Tongue in cheek and dads? I'm already thinking of like parody movies. Well, (laughs) you're always thinking of that. The, here's the thing. They've also licensed Bob Dylan's entire library and they want this film to be named after one of his songs. We get to pick the song. This is a user submitted mandate from John Rittner. That's cool. Oh boy. Well, you know what that means? The writer's room game show has begun. Here we go. <laughs> I, uh, do we start with Bob Dylan? I feel like... It kind of feels like we have to. I feel like or we kind of have to. do we shoehorn the story into the, time, to the, to name yeah. the song? Yeah, Bob Dylan songs. Oh, man. That's that's a fun mandate. It's a fun yeah, mandate. I'm not uh, sure. That's an interesting one. Bob, <laughs> so, Bob Dylan songs. There's going to be hundreds. Everybody go- must get murdered. <laughs> Hey, um, That's my favorite one of all of his, well, uh, his entire title. library. We, we think of murder mysteries too, and they always have such. At least the Ag- Agatha Christie stuff has such a, like fun, iconic titles that you know say so much about the movie. I mean, you have stuff. End of the line. That's, End of the uh, line was the first one I saw. That that's kind of a fun murdery sort of title. Oh, there's some. I'm I'm just looking at Bob Dylan titles here. There's some good ones that sound like they could be murder mystery. Murder most foul. Is that a, is that really <laughs> is that really a Bob Dylan? Song? Which ones are you singing, Cooley? Okay. Don't think twice. It's all right. <laughs> Sounds like a really like a very calm James Bond movie. <laughs> it does. Don't think twice. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I like it relieves all of its tension immediately within the title. Yeah. The Man in Me. That's like this song from Big Lebowski. Knocking on Heaven's Door. There you go. Pay in Blood. So it sounds like we're going to end up with a somewhat folksy murder mystery, or we could because <laughs> of the way these titles sound. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to title it a Bob Dylan song, I feel like it, that should... Did, did the mandate say anything that, about that being like the song that is sort of like uh, the theme of the film? Well, you know, that's a good question. It, the way it phrased it was... So just the title. They just want to. They just want the recognition for all those Bob Dylan loving dads out there. Yeah, it's like the yes, knives, <laughs> the knives out thing. What isn't knives out? Isn't that the name of the song? Because I, I imagine mean, it's an, it has to be. <laughs> you can see how <laughs> hardcore Bob Dylan fans we are. One hundred. Like, what's music? Well, dude, we discover on this episode, on this show, that like I've seen no movies whatsoever. <laughs> like every yeah. movie we reference, I've never seen, and every Bob Dylan song we're in reference, I've never heard. Do we like Murder Most Foul the most? I Do we like, like? I feel like that's pretty good for a murder mystery. You know what? I think it feels like we should just dude, begin there at least. For some reason, I think of like Foul with a W, like chickens. It's a chicken murder it's mystery. Exactly what I was going to say. Too. I was going to say uh, the tongue and cheek kind of thing. But I don't know. Maybe if that's, it's a murder that takes place on a farm. That's fun. <laughs> I I'm just going to write that down. Murder on a farm. Do, do dads do dads love farms? <laughs> they love <laughs> I'm just going to google that real quick. Do dads love farms? Yeah, yeah, I I think that's the one. I feel like that's the most murder mystery title I see on this top 50 greatest Bob Dylan songs list. Josh, you've actually been in real <laughs> writers rooms where you actually like get paid to be doing it. Like, where yeah. would you, I'm not I'm not asking you to run this room or either your process or like what would you do first here giving this Well, usually we start with sing- do Lopper songs for titles. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> well, no, I'll, let's see. So, if we're for real, I think it's okay. Murder mystery. So, you know, just think like what's been done before. You know, you kind of got like the clue. Uh, what other kind of murder mystery? You got, you know, Murder on the Orient Express. You got every Alfred Hitchcock film. So, there's usually a protagonist. Typical thing is either you, you got your detective or somebody that's been put in the wrong place, you know, or been framed. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. I'm um, just throwing ideas out here. This is what I do. This is, yeah. I'm just thinking out loud is basically what I do. So totally, you know, so let's see, you could start with uh, everything normal and then the murder happens. That's usually what happens. You establish life as it is. And life on life the on farm. farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the farm. Well, yeah, like it, it's There's, usually contained too, right? Like the yeah, the ones that we immediately think of, it's contained, and so we get to know the characters, we get to know how screwed up they are, and how there's got to be some sort of event or something. I, I like it if there's like a an event on the farm that has a, a farm a, convention a, <laughs> brought a, a group of of <laughs> unique characters all together. That because I think if it was just like a family, like that's interesting. But I think it's more interesting if there's people from out of town or like people that are more unique to the farm, like people that don't belong on a farm they're on the farm okay are we let's let's just put a plant a flag are we going with farm i think i think we for should. time let's just do let's it let's do, do it. it all right farm <laughs> 
I think you're right. So, uh, you know, I was thinking of like, uh, like Clue or I was in the Ten Little Indians, you know, where it's all these people, all these random people brought together and then they start getting killed off one by one. So you can do that. That's, that's always a fun type of thing. Like who's the, the murderers in the room, but who is it uh, kind of story. So that's, that's what it feels like it wants to be because of, yeah, because of the whole murder <laughs> yeah. mystery idea. So like, how do we bring in characters that aren't if on a farm <laughs> that aren't usually all together? Right. Is there all the farms I've been to? <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty <laughs> close. They know each other. Right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, what you can it, do is like, oh, go ahead. There's, there's a wedding in the barn with, uh, there you go. <laughs> but I'm thinking dads as our demographic, that might be a little, I don't want to think too hard about that, but that's the, that's the only place I could think of being in Texas and having a lot of barns that have weddings in them. Well, maybe the wedding, maybe the barn wasn't the initial goal, the, lo- the initial location. So like you, what you could do is like, uh, let's say it's a, you know, hangover style it's like a bachelor party and they're on their way to vegas and the car breaks down and now they're they go into the farmhouse to uh, use the phone and it's you know raining out and, and all that so now you've got them in a location that they're not used to and maybe there is a group of people already there or other people keep showing up it's like a haunted lots, farm <laughs> lots of people's cars are breaking down and they're all walking to this house it's a horrible road am i the only one that thought we were going to be making a murder mystery movie about chickens <laughs> Or <laughs> uh, like a chicken run esque murder mystery. Yeah, but I don't want to. It's like, it's like when they had Joss Whedon on to direct an episode of The Office, and he got the Bat episode. Like I don't want to just like immediately pigeonhole Cooley into what would probably be an animated film. Totally. Well, you can have CG chickens in the live action film. Oh man, that's Lion, even more ambitious. Lion King style, photo real <laughs> chickens. <laughs> photo real chickens. The way we get dads in is we just cast like Bruce Willis and the entire cast of Red. Of Red and, and Red too. Yeah. You know what you could do is like halfway. So you get all these people on a farm and it's like, okay, people are dying off. And then right at the midpoint, the big twist is it's the chickens that are killing people. <laughs> and then turn becomes like a mini Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with the chickens don't have to be involved at all. Like, I actually love the idea of, it, although I feel like it needs the murder has to happen in like the chicken coop or whatever. So that's why it's the murder most foul, you know, something, okay. something like that. I mm. don't know. To, for the, if if we're if we're playing the pun in the title, I feel like chickens have to be involved a, somehow. If we're doing, if it's a, if the targets for dads, it's like my mind goes to dad jokes and just you know, especially if it's tongue in cheek. Yeah. So, oh, totally. Uh, that feels appropriate. Yeah, I like that. Maybe our detective is like pun out the wazoo i know i know that's kind of already the uh what's his name puns wazoo is his name (laughs) detective wazoo (laughs) yeah i like that okay so what is bringing these people to the farm i mean it could be that the car breaks down and maybe there's already like a family that lives there on the farm something goes down it could be like a uh sorry i'm just thinking of different ways to approach it you could do like one where it's like a serious detective story and it's like you got to go out to this farm to investigate what's going on and it's it was like a bed and breakfast type of situation, right? So this basically kind of knives out where the detective shows up and somebody's been murdered. And uh, now it's, it's all about figuring out who these people are and, and which one is responsible. Is the detective just trying to vacation at the bed and breakfast and a murder happens to happen? That's, that's even better. Yeah, yeah I like that's that. Fun. Just and trying to get away from the, the from the murder life, you know, all those all those sol- all those crimes he's been solving. That's actually a fun series. If you could just somehow repeat that joke over and over, like a, <laughs> every like time a book, he goes on movie vacation. Series. <laughs> a detective who keeps trying to go on vacation. There's always and murder happening. keeps happening. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what it is. It's like I just finished my last case. So I don't have to do this yeah. anymore. <laughs> like he finally retired, and he he keeps getting pulled into that. Ah, all right, one more. Got to figure out who's killing all the chickens. <laughs> Well, you know, the chicken thing now, that actually is the thing that the, the, the brilliant detective could determine, which is like that the chickens actually did do it. And if we, we could engineer it in a way to where we don't realize, but they don't do it because they're murderous chickens. They do it. That's like the chicken is the murder weapon that the killer uses to. That's, good. that's a great twist. Kill the person, that, right? That makes a lot of sense. I think we should go with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> makes a lot of sense may not be. I mean, I agree with that, but. Well, the thing about a farm is you got a lot of murder weapons available to you, right? So there's totally. like. You know, hey, there's a and they you know, there's, and they chose there's a, chickens. There's a pitchfork missing off the like. Who took the pitch? Like you got these great kind of you know. I should know the term. What red herrings? Yeah. Where it's like 
yeah. going one way or the other way. And then, the, but the surprise is you've been hearing the weapons the entire time. Like it's just the chickens out back. Oh, yep. That's a hundred percent it. Like, and they need to be annoyed by the chickens throughout. Like, and you say they've been hearing, yeah. you've been hearing them all throughout. It needs to be like, well, someone shut the chickens up. God, exactly. the chickens are loud and they're yeah, everywhere. So good. Yeah. I like the idea that, I like the idea that the killer was like walking through the barn and like passes the pitchfork. Like, no, passes the ax. No. <laughs> and then the bird seed or the <laughs> chicken right. feed nods. He goes, wait a minute. <laughs> it's, that gives it's, me an idea. It's funny because he went straight to like dumping bird seed, like chicken feed. Like on Home this Alone person, too. But for some reason i was imagining this guy holding the chicken and like using it to- <laughs> like stabbing it like, stabbing like with its, its claws and its beak uh, <laughs> i think you should train them i think it should be like a yes. chicken dogs. trainer yes we have the flashback at the end when they're revealing what happened and you're, you're, you're getting the chicken trainer training chickens okay <laughs> no that is that's really good I, I think especially if for some reason you said bed and breakfast i thought of like dwight's farm and the office yeah shrewd farms yes, that it's kind of weird and not your typical like bright and sunny bed and breakfast there's something a little off about it and there's something oh, yeah. a little off about the people who own it like something dark like you expect it to be them but it was you know it's someone so else actually their son or something like that <laughs> yeah could the detective be a woman or would that unfortunately like hurt our dad demographic uh, no that would help it yeah i think that but also yes seth a woman can be a detective okay <laughs> can women be can women be detectives i don't know yes. do they have those abilities okay oh my god okay good sorry i'm just a raging chauvinistic pig no i think that would be great let's uh you know we have mayor mayor of west town as our, as our detective mayor of farm town <laughs> yes. yeah we think in kate winslet josh who would you cast who have you worked with that you loved working with or would you want to work with because you're directing this <laughs> oh i am yeah murder most foul well i just decided that but it's not my authority we don't have to th- you know cast this immediately but yeah we should probably figure out the story before. first but yeah. Really? Okay. Okay. So what would be a motive? Do we, what do we do? Do we work backward from a motive? Do we look for like, what are the other characters we can? I've actually, I've never written a murder mystery. I feel like it's sort of one of those where you have to, yeah, motive, but also we have sort of what happened, you know, the, these chickens killed the person, but yeah, working backwards to see why. And then sort of, and what's the value of the journey itself, right? Because you have to work backwards. There's no other way to do it. I don't think you need to know where you're aiming. And then also you have to know what to throw the audience away from from right you have mm-hmm. to, what yeah. to uh so you, you have to know kind of know what you're show, what you're hiding and what you're showing to, to the audience yeah because i guess the journey the value of the journey is it, for a murder mystery is in the guessing it's not in like you know character revelation it's not in like character it's not necessarily about emotional journey of sorts. The really first hand value first value for the audience is like the guessing game of it Right. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's. I think that's. That's right. I mean, the, the usually the protagonist does change. At least there's some sort of either of recognition or you know the, the case needs to change them in some way because it either resembles a past unsolved mystery or because it like that's the one that's one like trope where like it'll un- it like it's eerily parallel to like a previous like have you seen um kid Don't detective. Say Goonies. Sorry, what no, you say? What, no. Look, this podcast knows I hate gremlins, but they don't know yet. I'm not going to be able to handle both of you guys hating Goonies. This podcast doesn't yet know that I don't like the Goonies. They know, everyone knows I hate gremlins, but if we're going to bring that up now. Sorry, I didn't mean to just rail, but I, sh- I probably me. shouldn't pan over to my Goonies poster. <laughs> no, you should I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I'm not a Goonies fan. I know that's a very unpopular thing to say, but that movie just makes me feel uh, dirty for some reason. <laughs> it does. It's yes, it's it doesn't have the same effect when you see it as a adult. But I would argue I don't know if I would have liked it as a kid. Okay. Um, we don't need to bash All on right. the Goonies. Just Chris Columbus personally. If you're out there, Chris Columbus. Paused. <laughs> I'm just gonna do that for <laughs> future reference. I love Chris Columbus. I shouldn't even I do too. That. He's he's really great. But yeah, that movie just didn't rub me the wrong way. Totally. Chris Columbus by the way you're wonderful please come on our podcast and please, please. we love you countdown resumed the question here then is do we start just listing red herrings like do we oh what, what, what actually i was saying the trope of well i was gonna say we need our characters too to sort of know who's who who dies who like because we know we have our detective you know lady detective wazoo <laughs> wazoo <laughs> which i think she should be sort of uh you know fish out of water like not be if this takes place in you know southern you know texas or is she bad at vacationing or is it funnier if she's actually really good at vacationing just doesn't get to do it 
it. I think she's from the city, and it's like I'm getting out of town because that's where all the murders are. And then <laughs> it's like uh, she uh, ends up on this farm. She's like, God dang it, there's murder out here too. And so I think it's Margot Robbie, just because I think she's wonderful. So that's fun. I love Margot Robbie. Yeah. Oh, I love. That. She'd be a great detective too. Yeah. She's super fun. Is she? It's really great. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. Is she? She's so, making and she's cracking dad jokes the whole time. Well, and so in this this little period right before a murder happens, so we're seeing her try to vacation. Is it more interesting if she's good at vacationing, like if she like legitimately is ready to relax and her like she's able to do it, or is she like is she not used to it? Is she kind of like having trouble? Like I know she's fish out of water in the farm, so like is there do we play around with like her discomfort in not like the girly girly discomfort, but just like that i'm trying to think of a good example of this she doesn't know how to relax that, that type of character that just can't yeah i think that that feels right it's like you want her to be a little bit of fish out of water so it's you know she's trying to do that by by leaving the hustle and bustle of the city so it's going to the quieter outskirts where things aren't supposed to happen and she runs right into right right into the uh more murder she steps in murder could she be really eager so she gets it but think about a bed and breakfast a lot of you know they have like at least the ones in movies they tend to have public breakfasts where like you eat with everyone else there yeah you're there with the homeowner or you know the farm owner yeah. Or whatever. yeah i think that's fun and we if we have if we have a classic like uh you know husband and wife farmers and maybe they have a family there as well and it's this awkward sort of breakfast where the entire family's there and she's eating you know breakfast with the family oh my um, gosh it's funny for me to imagine her as being either super outgoing or the exact opposite like i feel like she's the opposite should, yeah I the think, opposite yeah. okay yeah, opposite. introverted it's like they're the hat they're the they're the really kind you know um farmers that are taking bringing people in and they have those those kind of bed and breakfasts that are so large like you can have you know uh, oh, yeah. like six other people Total staying couples, there yeah, so whoever there's your group of people coming from all over the place that you can have on this farmhouse that's great but what if what if it what if it was huge but the dining room still was absurdly small <laughs> and it's like even like even with her and like a family of three it's it felt full already but then over the course of the scene as we're meeting people like more people keep coming into the room and they still keep scooting and managing to all sit at the table and by the end of it it's just like how are we all in this tiny room like pressed up against windows and stuff so we've got if we've got our mom dad and like a farmer son and then maybe like a honeymoon couple nice yeah, yeah. and then maybe like one other it's got to be a creepy loner that looks <laughs> yep. like he could be like a you know a hitchhiker He's Absolutely. like, I carry, I just carry this fish hook around <laughs> in, a, in a bindle. So, okay. So that, that right there is carrying a fish se- hook around. seven people, including the detective. Maybe we have, yeah, the mom, dad, farmer, son, honeymoon couple, creepy loner. One of them dies. Maybe the, how, how many is that? How many people? That's seven, including the detective. That's good. Yeah. And so if one of them there, dies, could there be like a local, a local politician or a local somebody who's always there, who doesn't live there, but is constantly, especially someone who might be in power. Cause I feel like that's an immediate red herring of like, Oh, you know what you could you could do is it's a local celebrity <laughs> this is a That's random it. story my my parents stayed at a bed and breakfast and they like had breakfast with Zucker- they like had breakfast with zuckerberg's parents <laughs> they were they were there as well so just some sort of random thing where it can have like a local celebrity or somebody that's related to it that so it, they're calling attention to themselves uh in a big way and kind of over the top way what if they're kind of a spokesperson for this uh for this bed and breakfast like they have been over the years like perhaps there was a billboard with their face on it at some point point in that like in a once upon a time in Hollywood how he's got that piece of the bill a piece of the billboard of his face yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the driveway like what if there's like basically his only piece of memorabilia some billboard this guy was on at some point is like wallpaper in one of the rooms in the be- in the bed and breakfast or something who is this somebody who lives there yeah no well man maybe he doesn't, doesn't live there but he's from the town and he's like a local celebrity he's always over there like the bed and breakfast would could even be named after him almost to where like what if it's this what if he's like a celebrity a celebrity Celebrity chef that lives out there. Everybody knows him. He's the one that brings food over for them in the morning. So that's how you can introduce him in there. So he's he's they've got framed photos of him, and he's a big deal, kind of in this world. He's because, always he's uh, always bringing his knives everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very suspicious. And maybe oh. a lot of people have died at this hotel at this bed and breakfast too. So it's like people are always it's a dying. Thing. <laughs> you know what? That's a fact though that should be revealed very nonchalantly, like yes. really late in the story. Or not really late, <laughs> right. but later than you would want to know that someone people died at the bed and breakfast. Okay. We should we should talk about so that's eight characters. If we have detective, the family, mom, dad, son, honeymoon couple, creepy loner, and a local celebrity chef. That's eight. Someone's gotta die. Yeah. So who do you want to kill? I feel like maybe 
the f- well chicken uh, the chicken is the murderer but we know someone trained the chicken it would make sense for like the far- one of the farmers to do that but the one i suspect the least is like the mom or the dad though yeah. like cause, oh, i guess because i i suspect the farmer's son he stands out as a notable like character yeah especially if we if he's supposed to be the one who's sort of running the farm now because they're sort of retired and they've got their they're running the airbnb or the the bed and breakfast the mom and dad maybe it could be that but is that expected for one of the farmers to be the murderer like the chef that- is the one who's suspected well this is a good problem we have so yeah. far we, we can't yes, even figure is. out who the murderer is and we're writing the story <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say it's a fun cast of characters so if we can figure out sort of who did it we can work backwards and sort of you know figure out some of our what if well what about this she's trying to vacation somebody dies in the chicken coop they <laughs> they write it off as this happens right people die in chicken coops all the time and they're yeah, like they're no really like dangerous. that doesn't sound yeah they're really dangerous like the chickens have sharp beaks and she's the one who finds some little clue that's like i believe this was actually a murder and what if you have this central dramatic question <laughs> no, people of, die in these things all the time <laughs> yeah what if it's this central dramatic question that we actually <laughs> play around with in the second half of act two which is like like is she projecting murder into this situation because that's all oh, she that's knows fun. yeah yeah i yeah. like that a lot that's fun it's like yeah she's that's all she's lived for you know such a long time oh, so and, is she bringing that to the story as opposed and to- what if what if she's sort of being forced on vacation because maybe her her chief or whatever is like do the detective i guess real detectives do actually i imagine her as a private detective oh, okay no yep. i was trying to put some of that mayor of east town thing in there where they're like you need to break stop trying like, to make everything i know. Well, hey, i'm sorry well, i just well, came well, off of it it could uh, do that there's no reason why you couldn't it could be it could be a detective from a police you know i was thinking if there, if we see yeah. sort of early on that she does this or it's a, a thing that she does she's obsessed with her work and is always trying to make this kind of thing a, a murder or whatever oh well if you have some case that's an example that she's currently working in the city excuse me at the beginning her chief is like not everything she is a murder it. yeah she botched it yeah and not everything is a murder you thought it's a murder but it's not and then th- she's that plays out here on the farm you want her in the third act to actually also solve that murder that she supposedly botched in the first act turns out you want her to actually be right oh it was a rooster somehow <laughs> <laughs> oh. but, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, you, somehow like solving this mystery helps her solve the one back home as well. Yeah. 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 Love that. Sure. Yeah. I don't know what it looks like in execution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you hear that? I uh, think we're, I think we're facts. getting a fax from the studio. Yes, we do. Our wild cards are faxed to us now. Wow. I guess I'll, uh, I'll just wait for the we're going back to come in time wow. slowly. Yeah. I was going to say this fax is from 1987. Any, any day now we should be, Oh, I can start to see it. There it is. I can see it. it I guess it must have come to me quicker. <laughs> um, I love that you pick the sound effect that's like five minutes long, and it's just us sitting around listening to a fax sound effect. Um, what do we get? So the executives had decided they were... Apparently last night, one of our execs was reading an article about a guy finding a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic in a landfill and refurbishing it, and wants to see if we can work that into this. Okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> this was a Work real article they read. Into this, okay. Maybe, okay. maybe that's the the uh, the original case. <laughs> it's the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. It's the original <laughs> hey, case, yes. or keep going. What do you? What, <laughs> what does that look like? Um, no idea. Because I was gonna say it could be some dumb thing the farmer's kid is doing. That's some project oh, the farmer's kid is doing. <laughs> is fixing up a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. I mean, that's like a full found, on. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. That's well, a, that, that that's a creepy very thing. Yeah, that's, that's a creepy right? thing to be working on. Maybe so that yeah. she would find in a farm, like in one of the barns, like or one of the storage, like sheds. Yeah. A, a jump, jump scare. <sighs> it's like she opens it and it's full of Chuck. It's like not just one. There's like twenty of them, and they're all like decayed. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of kind of moving. Yeah, they all come to life. She turns the light on and it's just... And then they all like... Happy, happy birthday! <laughs> it's like, yeah. why did you plug all of them into the same outlet? That's... Not only is that terrifying to turn the light on, it's also incredibly dangerous. Well, that was easy. We did yeah, that. That's great. That's great. All right. Okay, so... Okay, we know... We sort of know what, what she's there about. Why does mom kill... It doesn't have to be mom. Oh, it doesn't who, have to be mom. Who's the killer? Do we... Okay, who, so who's the killer? Do we decide that? I, I think... It's I like, think you're right. I feel like one of like the mom or dad, maybe. That is kind of a bummer, though. Like, how old is the kid? 
I was thinking he was like a young adult in my mind, and they're like an yeah, old, like older 30s. couple. Yeah, because he's sort of running the farm, and they're just working in the bread, bed and breakfast. They're sort of retired. Well, yeah, let's figure out who each of these people are. Like, because I feel like, or we don't have to. But like, the farmer's son feels to me the way we're painting him feels like an immediate red herring, like big red herring. Mm-hmm. Totally. The chef also immediately felt like a big red herring to me too, because he feels like someone who has a little bit, a little bit of power, a little bit of influence, and therefore, you know, everybody loves him. Like, it just feels like that's someone you would then look to as well. The moths would fly to that one. Honeymoon. Oh, I mean, it could honeymoon couple. It could be like they could think that it's like a crime of passion or something if one of them dies. Oh, if it's one of the yeah, because that you're that, gonna kill one of them on their honeymoon. That's <laughs> wow, vicious. Well, wow. I'm, ju- I'm just thinking like or uh, both of them uh, at the same time. That's probably better. <laughs> uh, yeah, much less vicious. They were getting it on in the chicken coop essentially. Uh, that's a more slasher territory. We yeah, <laughs> start to, uh, True. one of them dies during. I don't know. Maybe that's that's too much. But I'm thinking like to make one of the honeymooners feel like they might be guilty. It's like if one of them died, obviously the other one would be the main suspect. But you also have the creepy loner who obviously is going to be, depending on what we have him do, if he's just a weird, you know, like Dwight Schrute kind of character. I don't know. They're they're all kind of weird. Well, we also talk about how people have died here before. We've talked about like lots. We've joked about other. There have been many other deaths at this that we d- determined at this bed and breakfast before. And you could list them like, like when she's finally getting this information, you know, the owners could be like, yeah, that guy died of natural causes when he fell into a a hole that guy felt like it's like <laughs> you know describing all of it these is, different ways. so if there's, if there's lots of deaths happening in the past i feel like our killer here, would be a i was just gonna say here's the thing if, you, if you're gonna you know if you're gonna train a bunch of chickens to kill people like you're not just gonna do it once you're gonna kill <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> otherwise what's the point that's a lot of work for, for nothing. So then why so, do it? Is it is it just a psych a psychotic thing or is it like uh No, I I think oh why why do it? Um Or well, did they yeah, not mean to? A, what if they love the chickens and the chickens can't help but kill? And Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe maybe it was a uh, you know, he trained them for another reason and uh now it's out of control. So good. Okay. Why <laughs> like would you train chickens? You train. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a wolf problem. They had a lot of wolves coming into the uh, area, and so and they were stealing chickens. Okay, foxes. <laughs> no, and foxes. Uh, oh, sorry, I said and or fo- and fo- it, we we can go with wolves. Fine, <laughs> fine. It's that kind of sh- that kind of movie. There. So you're t- saying he trained the chickens in self defense? Yeah, but it was self <laughs> offense. Self offense. <laughs> self offense. Oh my God, murder um, most foul. I'm, I'm really loving the idea of these chickens being trained and then becoming like like bloodthirsty <laughs> like for more death. <laughs> would would this <laughs> this character, this Margot Robbie character, which my God, such good casting, is say there were a series of these as books or movies? Are they all named after Bob Dylan songs? Because if so, we might want to work that into her character somehow. Like her name should be Bobby Dylan. <laughs> With an eye, <laughs> yeah, with an eye. I.e., that's actually great because oh, that's immediately eye. a topic yeah. of conversation. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, "Oh, like Bob Dylan." She's like, "No, no, no." It's spelled know. completely I'm differently. Not a fan. Detective Bobby <laughs> not Dylan. Fan. She's not a fan. Does not like Bob Dylan music. Does not like Bob Dylan. And then the Chuck E. Cheese characters can sing "Murder Most Foul." At, like someone can pump "Murder Most Foul" through the Chuck E. Cheese system that's in the farm at some point as either a like some horrifying like third act setting or. I think the I, other thing I that feel like it's more of an end credit. Stories. It's more of an end credit song, sung by the Chuck E. Cheese characters. What were you going to say, Josh? The other thing that happens in these types of stories where there is somebody who is like, okay, that looks like that's the person that's the murderer, and the uh, you know the te- detective or whatever will kind of zero in on them, and it looks like they've caught him, like red-handed, and so it's like, okay, that you know, success, the story's over. But then it, either that person had a partner, and they were in they, the killings continue, or that person's not it at all. They're, they're and now they've kind of outed, they've you know shown their hand too early. So that's I don't know where that tends to happen in the story, but um, maybe halfway through. But I'm just thinking, it doesn't need to be just the son. You could have like maybe it was the son and the mom together were doing this. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a de- demented bed and breakfast host who like killing their <laughs> their guests. Well, the mom the mom is covering up for the son. The son is covering up for like one could be. Is that what you just said? Is it like one could be essentially like one is doing the killing and one is 
trying to cover up and protect the other. Yeah, th- basically they're they're working together in some some way. So they've there's been other killings on this farm. Why specifically? Maybe we start from the beginning. It's always helpful to start from the beginning and start over and just be, go from right through it. So you, we've got uh and, and jump in. And I'll just run through it. We've got Bobby Dylan, who's a detective from the city. Yep. She's uh <laughs> let's say that her chief is like you know you working too hard. All everything you see is murder, 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 and then uh, you need to take a vacation. Come on, chief. I'm the best detective you had, Bobby. <laughs> hey, take it. Like, here's two tickets. To, or here's a ticket to to. Uh, to if you're farm. out there and you're an animator, please animate Josh's uh, description <laughs> right now. Please don't. <laughs> Storyboards are a lot like swimsuits. Most of us are afraid to show ours to people, but then we see others and we're like, oh, cool, that person is also swimming. And that's because we're all just here to swim. If you're a director or cinematographer looking for a safe place to try on your swimsuit, this metaphor is breaking down, look no further than the storyboard workbook from Plot Devices. It's built to streamline your pre-production process, draw storyboards, plan shot lists, diagram lighting setups, set gear aside, show up to set feeling confident in your illegible stick figure drawings, silently communicating to your crew that you know what you're doing because you prepared. Learn more about the storyboard workbook at plotdevices.co and get 20% off your first order with code GAMESHOW at checkout. So uh, she leaves, goes out to this breakfast, bed and breakfast, is having uh, having breakfast, and that's where we meet all of these uh, people that show up. We've got the local celebrity, who's a chef, who is bringing the breakfast. We've got the, the farmer and his wife and the son, the weird son, and uh, a hitchhiker that's uh, dressed in all black and, and um, carries everything in a garbage bag. And we're meeting them all as what they else? slowly show up one at a time right, into this room. Right, out of the rooms. Up. Exactly. Is, there, Which, is I missing me I think that's everybody. The, the honeymoon I think that's couple. Everybody. Oh, and the honeymoon Moon couple, right? Who they, they're just making out the whole time. They, they can't stop, you know, <laughs> even sitting there at the table. They're just making out. And it's really, it's really right uh, next to her. <laughs> and the the creepy hitchhiker is just staring at them the whole time, <laughs> <Just> watching. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of her so it's them making right. out here creepy dude watching it's just yep so good yeah i think i definitely think meeting them at breakfast like maybe she shows up late the night before and you know you know we have a nice nighttime scene or whatever she falls asleep and then cut to morning everybody's coming out and that's when we're meeting the if she shows up that late at night what if she heard <laughs> the chicken what if she heard a series of things that were like what if the murder happens that night oh, that's good and yeah. she doesn't know that it's a murder or anything but she hears something related to the murder the next morning they're all talking about maybe we never meet the local celebrity chef maybe they keep talking about or somebody who stayed at this they, there were there's a character we haven't talked about yet who's staying at the at this bed and breakfast that everybody is so excited like is coming like oh they haven't woken up yet they haven't come out yet and then they're dead we never get to meet so we never get to meet the victim yeah. we end up getting to learn about the victim over the course of the yeah that's of, fun. The, of the story that's yeah fun. i like that that's good. And I'm assuming we'd have... Is that, sorry, go ahead, Seth. Well, oh, no, sorry. No, you were talking first. No, I was just going to say, like, when... Because somebody's going to have to discover that murder, which sets our story into, you know, into motion. Uh, but at that point, I don't know if this this farm is so out of, you know... There's got to be some sort of paramedic and, and people that come to, you know, pick up the body or whatever. And, and this, you know, she is suddenly in detective mode. Or not. I mean, you could make it out in the middle of nowhere. That's what I was going to say. Like, I feel like if we don't have that happen... It's it's more interesting and it could be sort of happen within the span of that day or something. And everybody's trying to convince her. It was just the chickens. Like the chickens went crazy and killed this person. And she's like, no, there's a, <laughs> there's been a murder in farm town. Over the course of a day is I, nice. Cause then we can like separate our acts by time of day and by like essentially like our, cause maybe that's how long it takes for the paramedics or whoever to show up and take the body or what. I, I don't know if that's, that, that's well, even a good ticking clock or whatever, but, or she just locks it down. That's She's a detective, so she's like nobody. Le- nobody's leaving. Nobody you know, in or like, out. Put, give me all your phones. Like she's she's taking complete control of this entire uh, location because she's going to figure it out. For well, this is uh, taking on a very hot fuzz kind of a very hot fuzz kind of feel. Like if she like totally small town. If she goes out and oh, she's yeah. like, we're gonna lock this down. We're like like I don't know what she would ask for, but some kind of like some security plans or some like basically she goes and asks the person in authority. Like maybe there is a security guard at a tiny booth or something like and he's like i don't know i could turn the lights off or i could just shut the gate like there's like the idea that like she's like <laughs> she's, exce- she's like expecting give me your phones and they like hand her a home phone they're like confused the- <laughs> like, um, <laughs> that's great the wall. <laughs> but yeah they just pull it off the wall <laughs> like, and the the farmer's son is like i'll get all of them and he think he just disappears and he's off getting all of the phones <laughs> from around the campus uh, 
Yeah, I like that a lot. And she just locks it down and, yeah, makes it a crime scene. Maybe, uh, you know, a bunch of people are sort of, even though there's been a murder that's happened, they're sort of pissed that it's interrupting. She's interrupting their vacation or whatever. Well, remember, they um, don't know, they don't believe it's a murder for the, like most yeah, of exactly. them. Like most yeah, of yeah. them. Maybe somebody does. They're like, hey, I actually, I'm with you. I think it was a murder. Talk to me behind the so-and-so at <laughs> the this hitchhiker. time. He was like, don't worry. I believe or he's you. Like, talk to talk to me around the t- around uh, two o'clock behind the so and so. And she's like, well, "Can we just talk now?" Like, no, I'll meet you behind the so and so. Like, she's like, "What if I just follow you to the place and we talk right now?" There's no reason to delay this. See you um, at two o'clock. He just leaves. He just leaves. Yeah, she's like, "I know where you're going. I'm watching you." I see. And throughout this, throughout the movie, she keeps seeing him. Like, we could do the conversation right now. It's like two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's interesting. So we have she locks it down that morning. Do we know who died yet? Which one? Of, which one of our people? Well, it doesn't Are have you, to be one of our characters. Okay, it can be true. another character. One more person that we don't know. Yeah. The most famous person in our cast, preferably. Yeah. The famous person. Oh, I meant the most famous person that we cast, like Tom oh, Cruise or somebody. <laughs> But how would we, <laughs> we would only see them in the flashbacks because we don't meet them before they die? No, we'd see their uh, dead body and that's it. It's like last man on earth. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, we have all of our characters are basically that we came up with are, are surviving. They're, they're all Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford died. Actual okay. Harrison Ford. It'd be funny if it's, if we actually make it an actual <laughs> celebrity, like, oh my God, no, like you know, the Harrison Ford is staying here and that's why they're freaking out. That makes sense. And then he doesn't show up it's because down? he died. <laughs> <laughs> the, the farmer and his mom one of the life insurance money it's like you're not even connected to him in any way <laughs> <laughs> i love the line harrison ford has been murdered i want to see the scene at the end where they show what actually happened in harrison ford <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here what is it? oh my god chickens not again <laughs> not again <laughs> the chickens get revenge on harrison ford from, from <laughs> From a past incident. He comes out here a lot. He loves it out here. It's like a riding retreat or a, I don't know. What is his damn do? chickens? An acting retreat. Oh, this hasn't gone off the rails. Okay. How much time <laughs> do we have? Uh, we've got 10 minutes. To me, it actually just, it finally, it just keeps getting better now that Harrison Ford has been the one murdered. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess at this point is when she starts questioning. Um, should we have like a montage of her questioning all the people inside of the bed and breakfast? Maybe I'm trying to think of the, the sort of, and the classic murder mysteries, what the chain of events is. And we can start to sort of see, you know, each character having these moments where they could, they were gone or they don't have an alibi or whatever that night. Right. Like the celebrity chef was like, no, I was in the kitchen making, you know, making everybody a snack or, you know, whatever it is. I feel like that's the yeah. the, the next sensible thing that would happen in the plot. <laughs> I, sensible. I, I the word sensible with right <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, it, it, I think she would, it, you have that moment where it's like somebody, you know, Harrison Ford's been killed and, and we all, you know, they're all standing in the same room going, oh, you know, who was it? Dun, dun, dun. And then it's, uh, she would lock it down and then kind of say, you know, nobody move. Everybody go back to your rooms. That's usually what cops do, right? It's like, go, everybody go back to your rooms and stay inside until I tell you. And then um, it would be that exactly what you said, kind of going around one by one and, and getting their, uh, getting their stories from them. What if they're already just sticking their heads, they're all in their rooms, like sticking their heads out the window or something. It's like, everybody go back to the rooms. Like we are in our rooms. Like I just like consistently <laughs> undercutting her authority in this place with, with people not being rebellious, just being very friendly and accommodating, but, but with yeah. something horrible, a grizzly murder mm-hmm. happened. I just thought, you know, what you could do is they didn't mean to kill Harrison Ford. It was like, they were trying to get their dad and it's like Harrison Ford uh, sleepwalks <laughs> at night. And, um, they're like, <laughs> That's at really night, good. It's like they have a very similar silhouette <laughs> and it's like, there's your, you know, there's oh, your uh, reveal. That's so good, man. That's, that's what, that's that, when they're setting son. up Harrison Ford at the dinner table, they're like, Harrison Ford is staying here. He'll be here any second for breakfast. He loves so-and-so. And they've set a place just for him. Like they're all crowding, you know, the table, oh, leaving a place just for him. And then, dad and then walks while in. waiting for him, the dad and the mom is like, my husband looks like Harrison Ford. They have the same silhouettes. I saw Harrison one night and I thought it was him. <laughs> and I was, and they have the whole where he's like, he like, stand up, honey, stand up, show him. See, like they have the same. And that's, that ends up, it feels like a stupid joke, but then it actually plays into hundred percent. The, yeah. uh, the solution yeah. at the end. That's, yeah. That's it didn't it right be there. as obvious, but, uh, <laughs> I've never said you have the same silhouette as, uh, as Harrison anyone. Ford. <laughs> well, it happens if she like, if her story is like, she walked into the room and saw like what she thought was her husband and almost kissed him and it was Harrison Ford. Can you believe I almost kissed Harrison Ford? And 
There you go. Like, would, yeah. would the dad That's be played the, by like Dennis Quaid or something? <laughs> yeah, the dad should be played by someone who is just <laughs> also famous, but having to be. <laughs> or like uh, Richard Gere or something. It's like, have you heard that story of John Cleese at a Barnes and Noble? And the guy behind the counter is like, have everybody, has anyone ever told you you look like somebody? He goes, people say I look like John Cleese. And then walks out, which I think is great. Okay, we've got about five minutes left. I like I like where this is going. So mom, mom and son meant to kill the dad, accidentally killed Harrison Ford um, in the chicken coop, covering it up, obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, so they found, did they find Harrison in the chicken coop? I think. Is that where they found him? Yeah, yeah I don't know how they go I looking. Could, uh, I could see a scene where it's like, hey, breakfast time, we need some more eggs. We're, we're running low on eggs here. And it's like, you got to follow mom out to the uh, chicken coop. Oh, but I think. And uh, she's looking for the eggs and you just see a hand with a bunch of feathers around it. And, and, a and they're all still, they're all still waiting at, at breakfast, right? And so right. they're like, where is Harrison? They all call him Harrison Ford. They <laughs> never like, it's always full. <laughs> name like where is harrison ford and then he's not coming and they turn to the door and there's whoever found harrison ford's body and it's like because he's dead and that's how we find out because <laughs> yes and he i think to get eggs. i think what would be really interesting too is if mom and son maybe didn't know that they ex- they accidentally killed Harrison Ford until maybe like they're trying to kill the dad yeah they're trying to yeah. kill the dad so I think yeah. at breakfast yeah. that dad, clicked for me dad and Harrison aren't there and they're just you know acting as if dad's dead uh, Harrison's about to come down from sleeping everybody's talking about it and dad walks in and we see sort of a like a little bit of surprise or weird look from mom and son because they don't know that obviously they train the chickens they don't even need to be there the chickens the chickens do the work <laughs> <laughs> so um, dad walks in and at, at, at which point they're like, oh no, who died? And then they go to get the eggs and Harrison Ford is dead there. And we can obviously in flashback at the end, once it's revealed kind of show or, you know, they're confessing and they're like, it should have been you dead. You made us kill Harrison Ford. Um, <laughs> you made us kill Harrison Ford. And why are they killing him? Why are they, why are they trying to kill dad? Yeah. It can't be too serious because we, we've got a tongue in cheek tone. Um, so I don't want it to be anything like abuse or well, like. Yeah, uh, not no, abuse. No, no. You're but right. it, it could be it could be some, as simple as uh, he was gonna he was gonna leave family and that would have put the bed and breakfast in, <laughs> in jeopardy. He was trying to close. Really, really he was trying house. to close the farm or the bed and breakfast or something. He was trying to move yeah. move the family to. He's gonna move them. There yeah. you go. Oh, wait. What if, okay, I love that. Tell me what if this is bad and we'll do, and we should do the other thing. What if mom and son didn't do it? What if dad was actually training the chickens to kill him so that his family could get the insurance money and oh, it backfired? So, so the he dad, he was trying to it was kill not meant to be murder. He was trying to kill himself. Yeah. So he succeeded? No, no Harrison because Ford Harrison Ford died. died. He was oh, trying to get I himself killed. And then, the and then unfortunately, he, was... he and Harrison Ford have the same silhouettes. So Harrison Ford died. So well, now he's in huge do, trouble. Do we know? And uh, do we know how good chickens can see? Like, do they just have bad eyes? <laughs> Uh, it's time to Google this, Josh. If you're not, if you're not aware, we put all our Google search, like what we search, into the description for the show because they tend to be absurd. So I'm gonna real quick type what you're doing right now. I can't tell you how many times this has happened in different st- story brain sessions where you're like, "Hey, we should Google that," and then you're googling who invented cardboard, and you're like, "What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about?" But how I think well, it is a way of just to have your brain kind of operate. Totally. Yeah. I don't Chicken know. eyesight is amazing. They can see better in color than humans, can detect and see light and color shades better than humans, have three eyelids. By the way, all this information should be shared by <laughs> characters in the film. Can move each eye independently and have a 300 degree field of vision without turning their head. Wow. Chickens see, and then it says chickens see in much the same way we do. And I'm like, well, that didn't sound like it that they do. <laughs> okay, but, but it was dark. It was dark. They don't, you know, it was a, it was it a was mistake. Dark. It was a chicken mistake. Well, is there, is there one like alpha or beta chicken? Like, uh, <laughs> well, like a, yeah, yeah, really Rooster, like, yeah. uh, like, uh, 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 what's that's the blue in Jurassic World? Like, are there is there a, a leader who it's Bruce Willis and Chicken Run, whatever his name was? No, oh, it was Bruce Willis. Oh, no, Mel, Mel Gibson, Rocky. That's a different vibe. I don't know if I like dad doing it and trying to kill himself or the mom and son doing it better because both ways. Well, one is malicious yeah, and do. one is like, I like mom and son only because you can have a sweet old lady and uh, and a creepy son and kind of go like, well, they can't be working together, but then they are. I think that's that's an interesting twist. And He's got and he's got Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Sorry, I would right. I just remembered the Chuck E. Cheese thing. Yeah, but and they're they're both getting specifically. It's Mr. Munch. That's who he has. <laughs> Mr. Munch or Jasper, not Chuck E. Cheese. That's too. It's Mr. Munch. 
Oh my gosh. My, <laughs> my, of course I, 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 I checked Google. Google. I'll make this only one argument. They're both for getting insurance. The dad doing both. it. Oh my god, Mr. Munch. The my only argument for the dad doing it is just thematically this idea of pro- she's is she projecting murder on a situation where there wasn't murder? That idea of dad doing it means it wasn't actually a murder or an intended murder. So it, it does play into that theme a little bit. Doesn't mean it's a better idea. I also still would love it if whatever this murder was, however it was done, again, sheds light on the unsolved mystery for her that she had been, you know, told was. You know what else you can do? It, it doesn't need to be a mystery at home. It could just be like, this is, again, throwing out a bad idea. It could good. be like she doesn't have a good relationship with her father, you know, and and maybe her dad is the is the is the chief. It's like you know, go take a vacation, and then it's like now she's going to this you know this house where the worst relationship between a father and son and you know exists, and where there's murder involved, and now she's seeing her relationship with her you know father in a different way. It could be as simple as that. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily yeah, need to be right. another murder that she's solving. It could just be a, a kind of a you know a realizing how important the relationship is that she's been taken for granted just no yeah, that works no that works that's 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 what i'm looking for and she's like dad look after this vacation i realized i just want to take you to chuck e cheese <laughs> and then they go i really <laughs> fell in love with the character munch we'll mr dinner. munch <laughs> <laughs> I love the character, Mr. Munch. I really think the showdown should happen in that room with all of the Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. All, and they're all on and moving and singing at the same time. <laughs> they keep on yes. they keep on saying things at the, the worst moments. Oh, and he's because he's been trying to put them back together, he's not really good at it. So they start sparking and catching fire. And then you got a barn on fire at the end. Yes. You have to have that for a climax. Totally. With, with, with Chuck E. Cheese, and like the, and flaming the ch- Chuck E. Cheese, like animatronics. And, yeah, and the chickens. St- and the chickens. Uh, <laughs> kind of opening and closing and the chickens are attacking people <laughs> in, in, the, in the midst of the flame <laughs> yes barn. yes see it was, we just cracked it, it was the chickens all on by the way guys i did google and apparently a woman was killed by a rooster in 2019 as she collected eggs from her backyard chicken coop so it is possible so we, uh, a fatal it peck. is possible wow so when we pitch this we have to remember <laughs> like wait we're telling this to people yeah <laughs> Too. Yeah, sorry. We're, we, we're <laughs> yeah, we're having a call with Disney right after this. Is that cool? Uh, we're not <laughs> sure. Bob Chapek. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, we ran out of time like five minutes ago, but I wanted to keep going and at least have mm. have an ending. I feel like we we kind of got the gist of our pitch here as much as we can get. We have a basic idea. There's a, it gets fuzzy in the middle a bit. That's okay. And in the beginning, most pitches end, do. But, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, you guys ready? You Those do are it? all the deets. We don't need to get all into all the deets. Yeah. Now, when we pitch it, but, we're yeah. we're saving the. Act- Actual, are we are we doing the kind of pitch where we're like, so here's what actually happened, and here's the story we're going to tell, and like from the audience's perspective, or are we pitching it from the audience's perspective? Seth, I think you should do sort of a log line or like a general pitch at the beginning. I, so I won't. What I'll do is I'll set up the whole premise, but I won't include Harrison Ford was murdered in the log line. Why don't you just start from the beginning and just to go like, okay, it's a murder mystery. Like if you just told those things that we you know were given, and then just start from the beginning and pitch it. I'll take breakfast to them discovering Harrison Ford. <laughs> Being and Cooley will take the whole movie. <laughs> no, cool. I was gonna say <laughs> yeah, that is kind of no. You can take if you want to take that, Cooley. I, I can take after that and sort of. We don't, we don't have to hand it off. I just don't know what would be easiest for. I think it makes sense for us, sort of taking an act at a time, sort of. Or Josh, would you rather go first and get it get it and get it over with, or would you rather just sit quietly <laughs> and change change your, turn your zoom off and change it to a, a different person's face? <laughs> I'll do whatever you guys want. You know, it's it's. Um, I'm I'm here to support this story that we crafted. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's a fantastic director of features like Sunny in the Dark and the editor of Sundance Hits Light from Light, Miss Juneteenth, as well as A24's buddy comedy Never Going Back. Welcome to the show, Courtney Ware. Welcome, Courtney. Hey, guys. Thank you for being hey. here. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So we're going to pitch you um, a really fun idea. Seth, do you want to kind of start us off with the... Yeah. The general so idea. essentially, we're we're pitching you a murder mystery today. It's called Murder Most Foul, and it is about a detective named Detective Bobby Dylan. No relation to Bob Dylan, not even spelled the same. She is kind of a workaholic to a degree. She's a very passionate detective, cares about her work, rather insert whatever adverb you want, a lot. She loves her job. And, but she, it's time, she is forced to go on a vacation. At the beginning of the film, we find her, I actually can't remember where we landed with this. Was she 
on the this, this pitch is going great so far was she finishing up a case or did we have something else actually yeah she's in the city finishing up a yeah. case that was that she thought was a murder homicide turns out it wasn't okay that's right not she everything is murder, murder. everywhere yes yeah. not everything is murder bobby that's essentially what her chief like tells her and she's forced to go she goes out on a vacation she goes to this bed and breakfast out in the middle of on this like farm bed and breakfast in the middle of nowhere the, and the chief was like you need a vacation uh, attempts yeah. to have a vacation right so she gets out there. She gets in late, doesn't meet anybody else that's staying there, and hears very loud, like the chickens at this farm are notoriously loud, very loud. She manages to fall asleep anyway. <laughs> the next morning wakes up and... Sorry, guys, I'm supposed to throw it to you, but I'm going to go a little further because I don't feel like I've <laughs> delivered anything of substance yet. <laughs> She, But she wakes up the next morning and she is, goes to breakfast. She gets there early when no one else is down there yet. And then people start waking up and slowly coming down to this bed and breakfast. And it's in a pretty tight room, even with just her sitting at this table. But then the family that runs it, it's this uh, mom and pop and this son who is has kind of creepy vibes to him. They're like setting the table around her because she got there so early. And they're really paying attention to this one spot of the table. It's like this one spot is seemingly very important. And they keep saying... They're saying, and they claim that Harrison Ford is coming to breakfast and they're whispering this like, so no one like, you know, so he doesn't hear, but Harrison Ford is supposedly staying at this bed and breakfast. Polly, you want to take it from here? Yeah. So we have detective Bobby Dylan, who's there at breakfast as, as Seth said, uh, as they set the table around her. And this is sort of our moment that we get to meet the unique cast of characters that we'll be seeing in our murder mystery as they come down to breakfast. Um, this bed and breakfast is, you know, it, it has a few rooms, so it's, it's not like your private Airbnb. It's, it's sort of shared between lots of different people um, on vacation. So the first people down is this honeymoon couple that are just making out constantly. They're just like all over each other. We also have a loner hitchhiker that came off the street and is staying there sort of, you know, dressed in all black, weird guy who is actually, you know, the the honeymoon couple is sitting on one side of Bobby making out and the, the hitchhikers on the other, like, you know, watching them the entire time. It's this awkward sort of, she's introverted. She doesn't really, you know, vibe with this. We also have a local chef who has, actually brings supplies into the, the the farm or the bed and breakfast like food and prepares meals for them at the bed and breakfast so local chef and then as Seth said Harrison Ford is also scheduled to join them at breakfast they are and at the all bed and so pumped and anticipating Harrison Ford's arrival he's not here yet but he's coming they, he's coming they guys. keep talking about he, yeah, Harrison he Ford upstairs. they're always using his full name Harrison Ford um, okay. <laughs> but something Wait, does does Bobby know that like has she overheard the whispering or is this they're all telling her they're all like okay. she's new so they're all very excitedly telling her Harrison okay, Ford so this is isn't here. something where the audience knows but she does not no no she's just like Copy this out. couldn't possibly be the real Harrison okay. Ford but they <laughs> I are got you. they won't stop talking about it okay. like it's yeah. constant Got it. And so they're all having breakfast and dad's not there. Mom mom and son are there and they are greeting everyone. They're, you know, having these sort of awkward conversations around the dinner table. When dad walks in and the mom and son sort of have a weird look exchange with the dad. Oh, that's that's odd. But wasn't expecting him at breakfast. Harrison Ford is still not there. Okay. Um, they're, they're out of eggs and the chef sort of sends someone to the chicken coop to get some farm fresh eggs out of the chicken coop to help make breakfast. And that's when I don't know why the chef sent someone. I'll just say the chef goes into the chicken coop to get the eggs, at okay. which point they see a disturbing image, a hand with feathers and, and chicken feet all over it and blood. You're milking this for all it's worth. And um, I love it, by the way. Harrison Ford <laughs> has been murdered. And the chicken coop. So, and the idea is actual Harrison Ford. We really <laughs> cast him as himself, and he's dead before he okay. can even deliver one single line. And Take it away, Josh Cooley. At which point, there's, there's there's a there's a scream, and we go to Josh Cooley, who will describe the rest of. So, it. Bobby Dylan. <laughs> well, so that's pretty much all we have. Is, is that. <laughs> so, Bobby Dylan immediately goes into detective mode, and she just locks down the farm. Nobody's leaving this place. You know, they're so far away; they don't even have a working. Like, those cell phones don't work out here, so they can't call 911 or anything so she's taking full control of it she's uh i'm going to to abbreviate all this but she's you know got it tells everybody get in your own room don't leave your room unless you talk to me first and so she's going around and she's you know interviewing all these people and getting their stories or alibis for where they were last night and some of them don't quite make sense or she's talking to the the son of this farmer couple she's like where were you and he's like well i was out back you know working on my, on my mr munch and she's like what are you talking about and uh he takes her to this uh farm and the, the farmhouse in the back and it's full of animatronic Chuck E. Cheese characters that he's been restoring like just 
you know, 50 of them inside of this huge barn okay. as you do. And so I think uh, they multiplied from when we discussed this. <laughs> Well, once you, once you, it's a, that's a hobby. Once you start, you, you can't <laughs> yeah. stop. So once you have 25, there's no um, reason not to have 50. So, right. So, so there's, you know, some weird characters here. Did we figure out what happens next after, uh, or do we just jump to the climax? We see these weird characters. We've got, you know, the creepy farmer's son. Um, we've got obviously the mom, the dad, the dad, the, you know, the mom looked at the dad weird there at the beginning. So we're, we have suspect, uh, it's, we're, we kind of suspect something there. He arrived late to breakfast. We've got the chef who obviously is always carrying around his knife. We've got the, the the honeymoon couple. We've got this creepy uh, hitchhiker who showed up. Who's late. also carrying around his knives. <laughs> yeah, he's got a bunch of knives he, in a he, suitcase. He showed up uh, late that night, and uh, he wasn't in his bed. At we find out that late that night. So we we sort of have a lot of red herrings. We don't really know. Um, but here's the thing: like Polly's getting at right. Like if we the fact that he died in the chicken coop. But, and she, Bobby immediately, like, Bobby believes, based on a certain number of clues, that this was murder. And everyone else there is like, no, chicken, people die from chickens all the time. It happens, it's a regular thing. Like, everyone there is like, it's a, this is a tragic event. Harrison Ford died from natural causes and, and, and when chickens and attacked like, him and like killed him. And there's like beak marks and claws and stuff on it. Like, marks. it's obviously yeah. like chickens have killed Harrison Ford. But accidents. Bobby feels strongly that this was a murder and it's a murder that needs to be investigated. And so like, you know, like, like Josh said, like we said, we sh- she shuts the place down and it's like, and this and, and operates this investigation. And so the story we want to tell is this murder mystery where the main character is kind of being, I mean, she came here to go on vacation and just happened to stumble upon what she believed was a murder. So the big question is, are you projecting murder onto this situation where, you know, a beloved celebrity simply died <laughs> from, you know, a, you know a from death. a cluster of chickens? Um, <laughs> or is there really foul play uh, oh, here? And I hate myself. I know. I hate myself. <laughs> just it's a murder most out. foul. Well, should, well, yeah, right at this point, we should probably tell her what the title of this film is. Yeah, Murder Most murder Foul. Most foul. The Bob right. Dylan Murder song. Most Foul. Yeah, we, we uh, look how much we all love ourselves Courtney, we'll, when we we'll say that out loud. While you finish laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. Yeah, yeah please. really, really yeah. marinate so, in the murder yeah. most fun. Oh, yeah. The idea here is to test Bobby's like self confidence, her own like detecting, like the, put her to the test here of like her the like her entire necessity for being here and importance like is being tested. Ultimately, it is revealed. Who wants to take this? This is the fun part. Cooley? No, no I want. I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, don't forget about our, our uh-huh. big uh, stunt as well. <laughs> he the won't. End. I think that's what he's excited, <laughs> that's what I was excited about. <laughs> so Bobby has figured out that, uh, I don't know how she figured it out, but because she's a detective, so we've got a lot of really fun ins and outs and what have you. And she then oh, the silhouette, uh, right? discovers, oh yes. Well, what so what truly happened is that the farmer's wife and her son uh, were trying was that the is that the ending we're going with? Yeah, yeah. Right? Am I yeah, saying like that? Yeah. They, they they wanted to off the the their father. And the way that they decided to do that is that they trained these chickens to attack. So they've basically created killer chickens and they wanted to, their the father to be the victim from these killer chickens. Unfortunately, what will have been cleverly set up as a, you know, just as a joke earlier is that we discover that uh, the farmer has the same silhouette as Harrison Ford. And then that just threw the chickens off and the chickens killed the wrong person. And this was a whole thing that was bragged about. Like the wives are like, you know, my husband has the same silhouette as Harrison Ford. Gotcha. And like, do it, honey, show it. So we'll have been properly primed for that. Got it. Yeah. And so it was, yeah, so it'll all make sense. But then, um, <laughs> The big action scene is when uh, Bobby Dylan, is, you know, is uh, trying to catch her, the, the farmer's son, and he goes running into his shed large, uh, you know, barn full of animatronics. And so it's like a shootout. And because he's been restoring animatronics, they're like kind of, they're all on and kind of singing like, you know, it's really creepy and weird. (laughs) And then they start catching fire. (laughs) That was amazing. (laughs) Yeah. So you got this barn catching on fire during the shootout. So there's a big, big climactic action scene that really makes it all worth it. And chickens are running amok as well. Like people are scared of the chickens as well. Yeah. The chickens are trying to attack. Should should also mention that uh, Detective Bobby Dylan is played by Margot Robbie. Oh, Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah. Margot Robbie. Um, Margot okay. Robbie. Yeah. Um, and a, you know, Oscar nominated signed. turn uh, <laughs> than the murder most fell. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. And the uh, idea also, I believe, is this could be a franchise of film, the Bobby Bobby Dylan <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> is, that a, is that a 
porn star's name. I just feel like we should have checked first. Um, oh no! But the, the, the films would be thematically each each film would be titled by a Bob Dylan song, "Murder Most that. Foul," and and they each and of them are about her trying to go on vacation and murder <laughs> happening and like and ruining the vacation somehow. Right. Right. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, she solves a crime and she actually, and I think we talked about possibly her figuring out the, her last, I don't know if we abandoned this idea as well. Oh yeah. The so case, the, the case she was kicked off of at the beginning, some, some parallel with this case actually unlocks her brain and allows her to actually solve that, act, that crime. Of course. In the end, naturally. Yeah. So it was can we cows. Just, so cows yeah, it was cows. It was cows. Yeah. So can we just tell you where to deposit the money for this or like, do we have to, should we go? through like a formal thing i i just i have a few questions ask away we'd love to answer <laughs> them we're very like, we're very proud of this film and uh <laughs> stand super, by every i'm uh i'm very stuck on the training of these chickens and i'm very curious so like they trained these chickens specifically based on silhouette not just like yes general killer naturally chickens. no because then if you did if you just did general killing chickens then you can have a real problem on your hands but you want to be very specific okay when with the, who the target is it's pretty impressive yeah yeah they're an impressive group <laughs> so like tonally like what are you guys thinking tonally obviously there's a lot is of, it not obvious <laughs> there's a lot of you know are you trying to play it straight or are you guys well, going I'll, for I'll like ask, I'll ask broad you this. comedy i'll ask you this uh courtney as part of our as part of our game show we like to give the focus group a chance to guess our assignment our okay. genre our tone that said we're now making her guess the answer to her question <laughs> her own question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I, you, we already gave you our genre, which is murder mystery. But right. for what would you no, say that our tone was? I mean, it it feels like you guys are going way more for for broad comedy. Yeah, I'm gonna guess yeah. that. Tongue in cheek was our was our is tone. It, okay. Tongue in cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Uh, you're not going to be able to guess the demographic, but it was dads. There's no way. We but we 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 forgot to mention that uh, Detective Bobby Dylan. She's going to be cracking like dad jokes the entire time. Oh, okay. We'll have, like, lots, we'll have lots. There's of a puns. lot of there's lots of pun opportunities <laughs> yes. for sure. The yeah. foul play, yeah. etc. Right. Now it makes sense. Now right. it all ties together. And we've also revealed our mandate already, uh, but it would be kind of hard to guess. But it was a Bob. We had to look through the library of Bob Dylan songs and use one of those as the title of our film. Impressive. We also had to work in a character who was trying to renovate a bunch of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, it's um, pretty that impressive. Guys. Made the story. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It didn't just naturally, organically grow from you know right. the soil of our story. But yeah, if, do you do you have any? Before we ask our questions, do you have any other questions about um, our <laughs> incredible story, what a rock solid story? Yeah, I mean that was my like. Main why thing. did you? Why are you? Sorry. Why are you? No, why why you did you are? do this? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Why? How much of our time? Of your time has been wasted? Um, no, I think that that was my main my main hang up is the believability about how smart these chickens are. It's pretty pretty impressive. Their eyesight is actually <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Uh, Seth, <laughs> we looked up some chicken facts, and it's, <laughs> of course, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah their eyesight. Research. Yeah, their eyesight is incredible. I could I could read a whole paragraph not, about not, it too. not with silhouettes though, specifically. <laughs> Yeah, they have trouble with silhouettes. <laughs> and, and they do have a thirst for blood. <laughs> right, yeah. right. They're um, on the precipice of evil at all times. So, yeah, Ryan asked ask yeah, so, the question. So with that said, we have two questions. Okay. The first question is, would you see this movie? Um, I feel like if it was animated, that would that would uh, bring my attention a little bit more towards it. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I would get pretty, uh, even within like tongue in cheek and, and comedy, I would get pretty hung up on the killer chickens. <laughs> I just don't know how you pull that off in a uh, in a real life scenario and it not just be completely jump the, cheesy. Jump the shark, so to or speak. Or horrifying, because I could also see a version of that being really like traumatizing for your audience. Not only the yeah. killer chickens, but, you know, the animatronics. I don't yeah. know, dude. <laughs> animated though i feel like i feel like i would i would be into that if it was animated i i actually thought first off that you guys were going more of the like elizabeth moss top of the lake kind of feel which would have been interesting but then you before know, we got to the chickens pretty quickly but, but the yeah. chickens is the is the reveal right so is that where you lo did we lose you at the climax of the film no i think it was 
<laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I guess it would be the reveal that lost me. Well, what if we what if we planted <laughs> seeds for it leading up to it? Like the fact that I'm gauging whether all of our time is worth me exploring this in front of all of us. And I just don't think it is. <laughs> So, that was a really long pause. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that is that I is a video. That was in your itself. brain saying, "Shut up." <laughs> I think, yeah, it is. I think you witnessed it in real time. Uh, this is the first in Riders Room Game Show history. So, you, the question, I guess, we already would. Would you see this film? I would answer, if it was, yeah, if it was animated, okay. I feel like I would. I would totally dig that. There's animation experience in this crew. I think we could. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah. we can do something about that. Our second question: Would you recommend? Okay. Would you recommend this movie to a friend? <laughs> um, <laughs> if it was animated, <laughs> a friend, a friend animated. you hate, like right. just a friend that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I do think that there are there are certain friends of mine that I any, think any dads that you would recommend it to. Yeah, yeah, maybe like pun forward people that uh, enjoy a good pun and um, pun positive people. <laughs> Yeah, that maybe aren't like aren't horrified by you know <laughs> bad movies on fire. Yeah, <laughs> you said that, not me. So yeah, I would say I would say I can I can think of some people that I would definitely recommend it to if it was animated. Can I ask a question the caveat the has to be there. <laughs> can I cross uh, examine the witness here? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> please yes. yeah. proceed. I want to hear your your real answer. Come on, everybody on this show goes. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Okay, so I see that. Yeah. Like I'm I'm feeling self conscious if I'm the first person who says no. Am I? Oh, uh, you weren't. Daniel first said real no. person. Daniel yeah. Ruth basically said no when oh, we yeah. asked him. Yeah, he he okay. skirted he skirted around the the uh, the answer, but yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't see this. <laughs> There you go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Writers Room Game Show <laughs> first, which is honesty. Okay, but it was the chickens. <laughs> it was. It was the killer chickens. It just totally took me out. That was I it. That was there. really it. That that was the first idea that we had. That's what we. That was the linchpin of the entire story. Was the if, killer chickens. If they were just like generalized killer chickens, and if they, that to me is way more believable than the than being trained situation. and targeted. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I we were that. close, That's a guys. Great answer. This we is a great, close this to is a good movie. This is a great focus group because we we can now take that back into this story that we will continue to develop. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <Please>. we'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> I I would like updates, please. You got it. And now this podcast will. We do need an editor. Uh, our, <laughs> clearly, the following podcast will be continuing this story and trying to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> Just an act of self torture. The Writers Room Game Show with me. Ryan Paul and Seth Worley. Executive produced by Grant Wakefield at Weekend Video and Ann Fogarty at Plot Devices. Edited to perfection by Renee Gomez. Our art is by your buddy, Meg Lewis. And our face-melting music is by Ben Worley. The Writer's Room Game Show is a Weekend Video production in association with Plot Devices. Learn more about Weekend Video at weekend.video and check out writersroomgame.show to listen to all of our episodes and suggest your own prompts for future shows. And don't forget to rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. It really helps our show out a lot. See you in the next one. Whoa, this song is cool, said everyone. Well, that's because this music and all the other music under ads in this episode was provided by Musicbed. They've got an insane selection of music that filmmakers and creators can license, and Seth and I personally use them on a ton of our personal and commercial projects. Anyways, check out the link in the show notes to start your subscription and get unlimited music for your next masterpiece.